Hey guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Bernie and today I will be talking about the FX3. Yeah, so Sony announced their cinema line of cameras yesterday and they already have uh, Venice, the FX9, the FX6 and now the new one, which is the baby, the Sony FX3. So in today's video, I will tell you my thoughts about it and five reasons why I won't buy the new Sony FX3. Let's go! Number one, it doesn't have any ND filters at all. The built-in, guys. Like its big brothers, the FX9 and the FX6. But seriously though, my GH5 and G9 doesn't have either. So why is this number one in the first place, right? It's a good question, I know. It's because for the amount of money that I will be paying, it has to have that ND filter. Come on guys, at the very least. Remember, this is a $5,000 camera in Canadian dollars. And yeah, for the price, I am expecting more. But then again, Sony will say, well, I can argue that I can't put or we can't put everything in this small body. In my opinion, that Sony doesn't want to cannibalize the FX6. Maybe that's why they've omitted the ND filter. Because if they put it there, people will be buying the FX3 instead, right? Than the F6. Correct me if I'm wrong, but maybe doable if they made the FX3 a bit larger. And guys, number two is that I have to buy a set of lenses at the very least. I am a Panasonic shooter and for a long time, I have acquired a lot of uh, micro four thirds lenses over the years. And yeah, if you're like me, it's really hard to upgrade. And not only that, I've gotten used to the fact that every lens that I have, guys, every lens that I have doubles the reach when on a micro four thirds system. It's really useful and I love that since I'm a wedding filmmaker and it's really nice to film your subject even though if you are far away. This is a really good way not to be obtrusive and it works for me. So really guys, the micro four thirds system makes your lens or lenses more versatile since it or they can reach farther compared to a full frame E-mount lens. Yeah, so really, that's really important to me. And number three, the 3.5 millimeter jacks door will be in the way of the flip out screen. Sorry guys, sorry to break it to you, but that's the case. It will block the screen when you wanna turn it upside down. So the flip out screen guys is really important to me as well as the audio. So for all of my cameras, I plug in my Rode shotgun mics and if the mics input cover is in the way, how am I gonna be able to use it well? Not unless I cut the door in half or totally remove it. But then again, it will expose the ports if I'm not using it. And it's good to have the handle for sure for all of the other future projects. But really, it would be nice if Sony gave us a choice of using the 3.5 millimeter port properly as well. I think it's an oversight in their part. But for some people, this oversight is not big of a deal. But for me, it is since it's really a bummer. And it's again, it's a $5,000 camera. Number four, I won't buy it because there might be a Panasonic GH6 coming. Man, this gets me excited. But who knows if it will come into a fruition. But if that happens, then that would be my next purchase. And that's no brainer for me since I have already acquired a lot of uh, micro four thirds lenses. And the thing about the speculation for the GH6 is that it will come with three, not only one, three versions. So we definitely have a choice on what to get depending on our needs. Wow, this really gets me excited, guys. I would also assume that it'll be half the price of the FX3 if that comes into a reality. Lastly, number five, it's way overpriced. Yes, guys, I have a wedding video business, but still this price is out of my league. It's a lot of money. Yeah. So yeah, this is really expensive. <sighs> All right. So uh, what do you think? Would you buy an FX3 if you're coming from a Panasonic uh, ecosystem? If so, why? Why not? All right. Do you have any other reasons aside from the ones I have mentioned? If so, please let me know in the comment section and I would love to hear your thoughts about this FX3 as well. Also guys, just a note that if there's a new camera coming out, it doesn't mean that the camera that you currently have, and in my case, the GH5 and the G9, that they will stop working. 
In other words, my GH5 and my G9 are still both very capable up to this day and even more so for years to come. So I will stick with them until such time that it'll be time for me to move on to a new camera as well as to a new system. And who knows when it will happen. For me, that we will see guys. Anyway guys, as always, if you ever find this video helpful, please give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and it will be greatly appreciated guys. So thank you, thank you so much for watching. This has been Bernie. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye for now.